Hey, Art of War 40k fans. Today, we have a breakdown of the reasons why Salamanders have gained a lot of attention as one of the best armies in competitive 40k at this current time. We plan to do more regular meta breakdowns such as this. If you enjoy this content, please let us know. And if you have any ideas, type down in the comments below. Also, if you can subscribe today, that would be great. Follow us on all of our different Instagram to Twitch, all our social medias. Anyway, I'm going to pass this on to John Lennon, and then after the second part is going to be Richard Sleegler. Marines have incredible aura abilities that dramatically increase the efficiency of their individual units. They are a combined arms force that is powerful in both melee and shooting, and their baseline units can still operate independently when needed. So what do Salamanders specifically offer a competitive player that takes Space Marines to the next level? Salamanders are an incredibly consistent and reliable army. They are often taken as a successor chapter, which allows them to use long-range marksmen. The extra 3 inches is a great buff to the short-ranged weapons they often employ, like flamers and meltas. By using this stratagem Relentless Determination, they can have any unit act as if it remains still, which is a great way to get maximum effect out of Aggressors, another popular Salamanders unit. Salamanders make great use out of the Whirlwind Scorpius, which is a reliable support piece thanks to its indirect fire and efficient shooting. Salamanders inherently don't need a lot of support characters, often just using a Captain Lieutenant. Rerolling ones to hit and wound, along with another dice thanks to Master Artisans, is a great way to get maximum damage output from your units. While in Tactical Doctrine, the Promethean Cult allows all Flamers and Melta weapons to gain plus one to wound, or any unit can get this with the one command point stratagem, Crucible of Battle. This bonus synergizes well with the Eradicator unit from the new Indominus box set. Because so many Salamander armies use infantry, they can split fire effectively, where their weight of fire can be put to deadly effect against both hordes and vehicles. Salamanders aren't just built for offense, but have strong durability too. The Obsidian Aquila is a relic available to successor chapters, and gives a 6 up roll to ignore damage to any units within 6 inches of the bearer, even vehicles. If you don't take a successor chapter, you will also ignore AP-1, making you resistant to light firepower. Against damage 1 weapons, you can even spend a command point to stand your ground, to add 1 to your armor save. If you do take a Librarian, there are several spells you can cast to make your Salamanders even more resistant to enemy fire. Breakskin gives one of your units plus 1 to their toughness, while Fire Shield can make another unit minus 1 to be hit in the shooting phase. A lot of Salamanders' additional defense comes from their jank and synergistic combos. One popular choice is the Captain on Bike equipped with the Salamander's Mantle. This relic makes him minus one to wound, and is excellent when combined with the Warlord trait Forge Master for two additional points of toughness, bringing him all the way up to seven. Notoriously, Salamanders have access to Self-Sacrifice, a great two command points that can make one Imperium Infantry unit untargetable while it is near a five-man Salamander unit. This can be really useful per for preserving your key units and damage dealers. Salamanders can also per easily perform heroic interventions, thanks to their default Chaplain Litany, Selfless Saviors. This gives the Chaplain a 6 inch aura for all of your Salamander units. Or, the Stratagem Born Protectors lets you fire Overwatch in support of a nearby unit, and then perform a mighty 2d6 heroic intervention. Their short ranged weapons can even be deadly in combat, as Immolation Protocols lets you fire any Flamer weapon as a pistol. Salamanders have a lot going for them, and have been very successful in the 9th edition tournament scene, but they are far from unbeatable. Now let's talk about weaknesses. What are some of the best practices and tools for limiting the power of salamanders and game planning against them? Number 1. They are a largely mid-range shooting army, so they mostly want to be in that 18 to 24 inch threat range, so if you can outrange them, you can limit the sheer efficiency of their shooting. Additionally, rules that limit the range of your opponent's guns, like the Harlequin Shadow Seer Pivotal Roll, Veil of Illusion, or abilities that increase the threat range of your own weapons, like the Admech Manipulus, can be quite helpful here in keeping your key units alive. Number 2. Abilities that limit their rather average mobility are quite powerful tools against salamanders. So for example, psychic powers such as Doombolt, stratagems like Tremor Shells or the Admech Seismic Bomb, Harlequin's Death Jesters with Humbling Cruelty, and other similar rules. Number 3. Space Marines in general can struggle against a significant mortal wound output. So units like the Orc Burna Bombers, the Archaeoraptor Fuselov or Wrath of Mars Stratagem, and Plague Marines with Blight Grenade Combo can do serious damage to marine armies like Salamanders. Number 4. Fast elite melee units comboed with many cheap small units so that the first unit can force the Salamander player to activate their Overwatch Stratagem, and then the rest of your charging units can safely declare charge moves into units like Aggressors. 
number five. Overall, Salamanders are still fairly an elite army that tends to remain within supporting distance of other units and the supporting characters. Some Salamander lists can be quite static because of this, and so on missions without central objectives, you can use mobility to dominate the objectives on the outskirts of the board, and at secondary points like engage in all fronts, line breaker, or deploy scramblers that don't involve killing your opponent's units. And finally, many Salamander lists do not have a lot of units that they can trade away from midfield objectives, and the Salamander playstyle also prefers to emphasize defensive positions, and so they are often not trying to contest your own objectives. On the whole, while Salamanders are one of the top armies in the game, they do have some weaknesses that a savvy player could exploit, especially other top armies like Harlequins and the Adeptus Mechanicus. Thanks for watching, and let us know what you think of our Salamanders analysis in the comments below.